All right, it's just about noon. I think we've got a, a good group over here. To, I think I count, I'm counting about 25 names. Uh, welcome to the Writing uh, Secure Angular 7 application. My name is Jean-François Biodeau, or JF, whatever works best for you. Um, a couple of quick things before we get started when it comes to this uh, presentation. Um, actually, let me jump right in. First of all, you should be able to see my slide right now, the writing a secure Angular 7 application slide. If you do not see that, please let me know through the chat window uh, so we can remedy that. I'm gonna switch over to the overview. What I'm hoping to do with this presentation, I recognize, hey, it is lunch. Uh, we only have about an hour or so. I don't want to uh, eat too much into your lunch hours. I really do thank you for taking the time to join me today. Uh, so I do want to talk about a couple of things when it comes to writing secure Angular application. Um, now, one caveat, uh, one disclaimer, really, I want to get out of the way when it comes to this presentation. A I only have an hour, all right? Security is something I could spend hours, if not days on. Um, and the second part over here when it comes to that is I wanna try to focus our presentation on the type of questions that comes up most often or to try the type of vulnerability uh, that I see most often when it comes to working with Angular. Um, so I'd like to get started with a discussion of preventing cross-site scripting attack. Um, unfortunately still fairly common type of uh, vector of attack on the internet uh, and how angular pretty much out of the box protects us against that and i'd also like to flip that around talking about scenarios where we may want not to allow cross-site scripting uh, um, to come in but disable the protection that Angular gives us. So I'll get started with that very soon. Uh, let's also talk about two other topics that comes up very, very often and uh, at my end. How do I deal with authentication and how do I deal with authorization with my Angular application? So these are the type of things I like to explore with you guys uh, for, um, uh, for your lunch and reserve the rest of the time, whatever time uh, remains open after that, to explore any additional questions, uh, any discussions you may want to have about uh, Angular, web security, whatever might be of interest for you guys. So let me actually jump right in. I'm going to uh, get started with a bit of a sample project that I've prepared for this presentation. There we go. <coughs> let me fire it off right now. Bring it up. And uh, actually, let me stop that first. Let's bring this up. And there we go. So in my web browser, let's take a look at this together. Just gonna wait for it to finish compiling uh, the Angular application. And uh, oops, where did you go? There we are. All right, so here is the starting application I'd like to uh, play around with, uh, with you guys. I've got um, not too simple, but not too tr um, complex application over here. It's some kind of online shop which has different products. We've only got four products in that example. I didn't want to get more sophisticated than necessary. We've got search capability. We've got sort capability. Uh, we've got shopping cart over here, but that's not really what we care about. One of the things that you'll notice over here is uh, first of all, we don't have any authentication um, mechanism. There's no login anywhere uh, to my site. So that's one of the things I like to uh, change over here. And of course, add authorization uh, to that site as well. Before I do so, I'd like to take a look at the cars that we have over here, the uh, different products, uh, Notebook Basic, Notebook Professional, et cetera. Uh, they have a title, they have a description, price rating. So pretty straightforward stuff. I mean, if we can take a look at this from a, <coughs> pardon me, uh, code perspective, we do have a catalog. The catalog is actually received, um, is actually pulled from a separate service. So we're using a web service over here to load the catalog, display the information, doing a little bit of caching as well. Uh, and the catalog itself is not terribly complex. I just want to show you the, uh, where did we put it? There we go. Our products. Yeah, man, there we go. Here's my product model. 
Nothing sophisticated. Uh, and something I should mention over here, I am working with Angular, so I'm, I'm going to take advantage of TypeScript. If you're not familiar with TypeScript, don't sweat it too, too much. Um, it's JavaScript with added goodies. So my uh, here's my product class. Nothing Ooh, la, la. As, as we hinted at previously, we've got a name, we've got a description, we've seen that, the image, the price, uh, the rating, and of course, a SKU uh, behind the scene. This is served via another service, and actually let me bring this one up for you guys as well, just give you a sense as to uh, how the application is structured. Whoops, let's bring that over here. And uh, here is the um, the catalog, as well as other services, including an authentication service, which I'll use later on. But here is my catalog. So nothing fancy at this point. It's just an array in JavaScript. Obviously, we would pull that from a database, but to, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to make it a JavaScript uh, array. So you can see, for example, my first queue over here, the HD 1000 uh, Notebook Basic 15. If I may go back to my web browser, we can see that this is Notebook Basic 15. So this is pulled via an API. And actually, I can show you the API over here. Here it is, uh, API slash catalog. Uh, and there's my JSON payload that the application uses to load that catalog. So again, nothing, I'm hoping at this point, this is nothing outside the scope of what you guys are already comfortable with, uh, already familiar with when it comes to um, even just JavaScript development, uh, even if you've never done Angular before. Um, what I am getting at over here when it comes to that catalog, let's go back over here. Let's say I'm dealing with marketing right now. They're reviewing the catalog over here and they want to start highlighting certain capabilities in the description that we have over here. So we've got a notebook basic 15 uh, with 2.80 uh, uh, gigahertz over here, etc. cetera. Uh, and uh, marketing is saying, hey, I'd like to be able to change the color of the text. I'd like to be able to highlight portion of that text, et cetera. All right. So obviously, since we're working with HTML, the simplest solution at this point would good would be to go uh, simply to the um, uh, to the description or the title itself and throw in a bit of um, of html over here so just for the heck of it let me add let's say bold around the name of the product now because that's a static string i'll actually restart the server actually it looks like it restarted excellent um and go back over here reload that page from my angular application and here's what we get in the output and that's actually a good thing at first it doesn't meet what we want to do but i do want to emphasize that hey this is actually a good thing uh, and i'm hoping you recognize why this is a good thing when angular um uh, load uh, loaded that information it doesn't even have to be loaded from a uh, server but it's presenting that information by default Angular will always escape HTML. Uh, and the rationale over here is we are protecting ourselves against cross-site scripting attack, right? So if that HTML, if that text that I'm presenting over here is not trusted, I don't know where it comes from, um, then uh, Angular by default will always ensure that it is, uh, that it is properly escaped. So again, that's a good thing. Well, it's a good thing, except that marketing, of course, is not going to agree with that. Marketing wants to be able to uh, do some formatting on those, uh, uh, those labels over here. So how am I going to achieve that? How am I going to allow some basic formatting, um, uh, basic formatting from the text that comes from the server? Even if it was text that came from my own custom JavaScript code running in the browser, Angular would escape those before we present that. Let's actually take a look at the uh, the code, the the code that presents the products themselves, that would be under product card, product card TypeScript. Uh, here is the code. I'm not going to spend too, too much time on it. Um, and actually, let's go to the presentation, really. That's the important part. Uh, the only thing I want to uh, highlight for you in this class, it's an Angular class, Angular 7 class over here. We do have a product which is injected for us. We've got a input annotation over here. There's a product. I've already shown you the product type over here. Um, so we do have a product and in the HTML, the presentation for 
the um, uh, for the cars themselves. Here's my presentation itself. I've got the title, I've got the description, I've got the image. So again, this is Angular code, nothing special about it. But the part I want to emphasize is here is my text. What I'd like to do over here is I'd like to change the code so that Angular will allow HTML in the product description. Now, because this is such a dangerous thing, a, a dangerous thing to do, by default, Angular will not allow this. If you want to, uh, if, you, if you must allow Angular to display HTML from some of your content, you can do so, but here are some of the hoops you'll need to go through. And uh, these are hoops that, that are put in place for, uh, I'm hoping you realize, good reasons. Um, so let me change my code so that I can actually display the products themselves, the product description with HTML in them. How do we do this? Well, let's go back to the product card component over here. Two, uh, actually, let me do a quick change over here. I'm going to add a property. I'm not going to change the, um, the um, original product model over here. I'll do this as part of my component over here. So let's add a property over here. So we'll make it a get, um, a get description. This will be... We'll start with a string for now, and we'll just say return product, uh, this return this dot product dot description. So that's the first change I'll do over here. Let's adapt the view, the HTML over here. And actually, so we can see both in action right now, I'll actually duplicate that line. So we can see both description the one that comes directly from the product and the one that's going to come from my component. So that's my description property that I've defined right over here. I right? standard HTML or standard TypeScript really uh, <coughs> at this point. Let's take a quick look at that. All right, we can see down here that they're both identical. No difference between them. Uh, I haven't really changed anything. I haven't allowed, um, I haven't allowed Angular to display on escape HTML. So how, uh, what uh, additional changes do I need to do to allow Angular to display on escape HTML? Well, the first, uh, uh, the first thing I will need is a DOM sanitizer. The DOM sanitizer, the very uh, component that is used, a service that is used internally by Angular to sanitize HTML, to get rid of all the uh, uh, special character, the ampersand, less than, greater than sign uh, in the HTML. So let me inject that in my oops, constructor right over here. So I'll get Angular to inject a sanitizer right in here. So DOM sanitizer is an Angular component. I can bring it up Yemen over here. It should have been added to my list of include. There it goes, so import DOM sanitizer from Angular platform browser. So this is an Angular service I'm using over here. Let's move down to our description. What I'm going to have to do over here is two changes. The first one is I'm not gonna return a string. I'm going to return a different object, a save HTML object from um, from the um, uh, from Angular once again. You can see that this was added to my import over here, Angular Platform Browser, so new object we're working with over here. So as the name implies, um, this is an object that I um, uh, built into Angular that we use to, well, basically convert any input, any object, any value to HTML. Uh, and here we can choose, do we want to use escape or unescape HTML? So to wrap up that demonstration, here's the last thing I'm going to do. I'm going to change my code. I'm going to wrap the this.product.description inside a this.sanitizer, the object that was injected in my constructor, dot bypass security trust HTML. So the name pretty much says it all over here. Uh, let me uh, wrap my product description in here. So this sanitizer bypass security trust HTML. So I'm basically telling uh, Angular, okay, this, um, uh, this text might have HTML code. It might have entities in here. It might even have script tags in here. Trust it. 
All right, that's what I'm doing over here in Angular. So there's a couple of hoops I needed to jump through, but I like to think for a good reason. This is not something we should do de facto, right? We should only do this from input that we can absolutely trust 100%. Um, now we're not done with that. Now that I've done that change, let's go back to the browser and uh, whoops, we're getting an error. I right? noticed the first line hasn't changed, but the second one, Say value must use property equals binding. What the heck is Angular talking about uh, over here? Uh, well, this is a warning that Angular is giving me, a warning for a good reason. Um, what I'll need to do next is I'll need to change how we are presenting that value. So if you want to present safe HTML, we cannot use just um, uh, just template as I'm doing over here. So let me change that over here. I'll give it actually of the uh, description in here. And let me use an inner HTML attribute, inner HTML equal, and here's the name of the property I want to display, description. So another hoop I need to go, to go through. So two hoops, one on the component, one on the view. Let's take a look at the output over here and notice now the HTML is on escape. Now I can see the actual HTML. Uh, and again, I should only do that if it is, uh, if that text comes from a trusted source. Uh, in other words, that text should never, ever, ever come in any way from an external user. All right, so this is um, the first thing I wanted to introduce you to. First of all, when it comes to protecting you from cross-site scripting attack, because it is probably by far the most common type of attack that we see on um, HTML application. Angular has this built in out of the box. All right, you are protected de facto against those type of attack. However, if you do need to circumvent it, it is quite doable. It needs to be done on a case by case basis. Um, and there's a couple of changes that you will need to do through your code and they're for good reason. Uh, Angular wants to make sure that we really highlight where we are going to allow uh, raw HTML to be pushed to our view. So that said, here is the first change I wanted to bring to my application. Now that I've got trusted HTML, all right, so now I've satisfied the needs of my marketing department. They can put what they can put whatever fancy formats they want to put in the presentation. They can start adding bullets. They can start adding a list. They can start adding a whatever style they want in here. All right, we're happy. One thing I would like to mention, though, is before you resort to uh, trusted HTML as I've done over here. I propose, for example, style. It might be preferable, actually would be preferable if, uh, if uh, marketing is saying, I just want to change, let's say the color of that description. I want to make it a different color, different style, whatever the case might be. Maybe a better way of doing this would be instead of relying to with uh, uh, a trusted HTML, how about we just provide a different style? to the class, all right? In other words, in here, I've got a class, uh, the style card dash text. What I would be tempted to do over here is just drop in a value from my component or another model over here to dynamically select the format that I wanna use. This would be a much more secure solution, um, a much more trustworthy solution than using unescaped HTML. But again, the goal of that demonstration is to show you how to work with unescaped HTML, uh, hence the reason why I've elected to use that direction. So let's move ahead. Uh, if you guys have any questions as we carry along, don't be shy to drop in messages in the chat or in the, uh, um, in the uh, question windows. I'll be happy to answer them as we carry along. But the next thing I'd like to do over here is I'd like to get into authentication, and, <coughs> pardon me, authorization in Angular. Uh, and this is a question that I get very, very often. Um, when it comes to doing authentication and authorization, the way we tra um, traditionally have been doing it before a single web, uh, web page uh, type of application has been primarily on the server. The server takes care of authentication and authorization. Um, we basically create just a, uh, a login page, set up a couple of rules on the server, no matter which stack that you're using, whether it's Java, JavaScript, uh, .NET, doesn't matter, uh, set up a couple of rules and let the uh, server, the, your stack, take care of this. Now, because we're moving the logic to the client side, it does change 
a number of, uh, it, it does change a number of rules over here. So how are we going to deal with authentication? Well, the first thing is I'm going to cheat you guys a little bit over here, all right? Uh, in the sense that this is something that realistically we could spend a day or two on. Uh, in the sense that, uh, first of all, authentication, there are different standards that we could use. We could use just um, uh, we could use just a simple username, password type of form, form type authentication, still commonly used, especially for public facing websites. Uh, internal websites, you may want to use, um, uh, you may want to use single sign on type of authentication, uh, and there's technologies for that. And when it comes to public websites as well, you may want to use different form of federated authentication, authentication via, let's say, uh, a Facebook profile via a Google profile via a uh, LinkedIn profile, it doesn't really matter. So there's actually many different scenarios we could look at for authentication. And I'd love to go through all of them with you, but time does not permit. So instead, let me start with a simple example of authentication, but reasonably complete nevertheless. Now, of course, if I'm going to do authentication, I need a server-side component, all right? Uh, and that server-side component is already written for us. Um, it's just a Node.js application over here. We've got an auth component. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this one, uh, but it's uh, written to work with a standard called JWT, J um, uh, JSON Web Token over here. Let's crack that open. I'm not gonna worry too, too much about the code. I am using a static list of users. I've got usernames, no passwords in here, uh, and then profile information. One of the things I like about um, a JSON web uh, token is that it makes it very convenient to transfer profile information, whatever information the server needs to send uh, to the client application. So what I like to do over here is I like to be able to send an HTTP request to this login path over here with a, um, with a payload to authenticate a user. My payload will be very simple, user ID and password. That's it, all right? Uh, it could be whatever you want. It could be less, could be more. It doesn't really matter over here. It's a very simple protocol over here. And assuming that we successfully authenticate the user, what I'm going to do is I'll send them back a, um, a, um, a JWT, JSON Web, tool, uh, web, web um, Token, token. All right, this is where I'm using the sign method. The sign method is um, a little function that I've created over here, which will use uh, the basically JSON web uh, token. Where are you? Should be in here so, uh, somewhere. Um, got a couple of exports. I was hoping it was right there, but anyway, um, I have a built-in code. Actually, I think the author over here, I'm boring somebody else's code for that one. Uh, somebody else had WebH, but uh, they've actually implemented uh, JWT code for us. And actually, I'll share that code with you guys at the end of this session if you're interested in looking at it. But the idea over here is with JWT, we're gonna send back a encrypted payload back to the um, uh, back to the browser if they successfully authenticate. So let's not worry too, too much about the server side. All right, the server side is written for us. What I wanna worry about, of course, is the client side. We are here to talk about Angular. So let me switch back to my Angular application. First thing I'll do is I'll actually start by creating a couple of uh, components for us. And I'll use my Angular command over here, uh, generate component, and I'll create a new login component. Give it a second or two, there it goes. So here's a new login component. I'll create another one. I'll use short form this time, generate the component and I'll create an order history component. And the idea over here is I wanna have a component to um, a, a component that should require authorization to access. So two new components were created for us. We've got a login component and we've got a order history component that were created for us. Now, this is standard Angular at this point. If you have any questions, don't be shy, but let's move ahead uh, when it comes to that. To implement the login and the order history, let me add a couple of routes to my application. Let's go to the uh, route, 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 uh, application route. And I'm going to add a couple of new routes to my application. I'll speed things up with a bit of a copying and pasting over here. 
And let's drop that in here. So two new routes have been added for us. One for the login and one for the order history. I'm just going to add my imports over here. Uh, so a path for login, a path for order history. Um, we're good with that. Actually, I will get rid of that last component. I've copied a little bit too much. I want to come back to that can activate later on. That will play in the authorization part. But for now, we've got uh, two new paths for the two new components we've added. All right. So that should be good. Next, let's implement the authentication. Let's take a look at, at how this is going to work. And to make it easier for me, let me actually create a new uh, service, service, uh, which I'll call simply off. Give it a second or two. There we go. So now I should have a auth service created for us. I'm not seeing immediately. Um, am I under app? Being blind. But anyway, um, there is my auth service. Uh, it's not implemented as of yet. So let me throw in some code into that authentication service. A couple of changes I want to do over here. I'll create a couple of utility class, basically models to exchange information. Uh, I'll create a login request class, export class login request. And as I hinted at previously, a login request will have, whoops, will have two things, a user ID, which will be a string, and a password which will also be a string, All right? So nothing ooh -la, la at this point. That, there we go. I also create another class, which uh, will make more and more use as we carry along, a login response. And this one will take one thing for now, which will be a token, which will be a string. So this will be my JWT token, my um, a JSON web token uh, that I will receive back from the server. Let's store it in here for now. We'll unpack it later on, but we'll, uh, let's take a look at this for now. So moving ahead when it comes to the uh, to the class itself, a couple of changes I like to, to do to my auth service. Uh, first one is I will store my token as a string. I'll show you why as we care along. Let me just do that preemptively. Let's go down to the constructor itself. A couple of injection. Um, because I'm going to do that asynchronously using Ajax, let me request my HTTP client from Angular over here. Oops, I import the right one. Sorry, just want to make sure. Excellent. All right, so there's my HTTP client from Angular. Now, if you haven't played with um, the uh, Ajax request in Angular, uh, don't worry about it too, too much. This is my Ajax wrapper for, uh, for Angular. The next thing I'm going to do over here <coughs> is uh, drop in a couple of utility methods. And for this one, I'll do, uh, again, some copying, pasting, accelerate things a little bit for us. Uh, nothing overly ooh -la, la but three methods I want to provide in my service. The first one is going to be the login method. All right, the name pretty much says it all. Uh, I'm going to expect a set of credentials. Those credentials are going to be of a login request. So an instance of my login request class over, uh, over here, uh, and it is going to return an observable. So we're gonna make this uh, asynchronous. We're gonna return fundamentally a promise over here. And uh, bring that back, there we go. Um, and for the rest, don't worry too, too much about the code that we have in here. Oops, I don't have my user profile yet, do I? No, I'll need to create it in a moment. Uh, let me do that in just a moment. But before we uh, do that, um, actually, let's get rid of the user profile altogether. I'm just going to change the code around a little bit. We're uh, not at the user profile just yet. So I'll just change it to return this dot uh, uh, actually uh, under tab. A WT token, and let's just store our response. Yeah, 
response token. All right, so let me start with that piece of code for now. Simplify things a little bit. Uh, we'll add to it as we carry along. Um, but when I receive a response, I'm going to tap it, basically uh, allow, um, allow, allow me to uh, participate in the pipeline without affecting the pipeline over here. I'm going to grab the token, the token that is sent back from the server in the login response and store it in my authentication service. And we're going to play with that token in more detail as we carry along. So that's my login. Don't sweat the details too, too much for now. What's important over here is, uh, first of all, this is pure Angular code over here, um, working with promises, working with the HTTP object, setting an HTTP request. When we get the response back, I'm just going to grab the token from the response, and that's it. Nothing beyond that. Logout, all I'm going to do over here is when we're going to invoke the logout method, let's set the token to be undefined. No more token, users no, log, uh, no longer logged in. And finally, one more utility method is logged in. Uh, we're just going to check, do we have a JWT token? If we do, yes, we're logged in. If not, we're going to return false. So that's the extent of my uh, authentication class for now. So nothing overly sophisticated. One last thing I'd like to do to uh, put in action because, hey, I've got the foundation in place, but uh, this is not going to show anywhere in the application. So let's add some code to the presentation and I'll modify the toolbar, toolbar component over here. Come on, there we go. The toolbar component, I want to bring to your attention right now. I can see I've got a search, I've got a sort, I've got my shopping cart. There's nothing in the shopping cart just yet. Uh, there's nothing to deal with my account. Let's change that, all right? Now, the toolbar component is going to need the authentication service to find out is the user logged in and, of course, uh, get into logging, uh, logging itself. So I will add uh, a reference to my, or I'll inject my authentication service in here auth service. So that's the service I've created with you guys just a moment ago. So let's inject it. I'll also make it public, not private, because I'll need to share that with my view. And let's actually go to the view right now. Uh, and for this one, again, a little bit of creating cop creative copy and pasting to speed things up. Since I do want to throw some HTML, nothing complex. But there we go. So on my toolbar, I'm going to add a new section over here, an account, uh, an account button, which will have uh, one of three things that will be rendered uh, over here. I'll have a, um, a, um, a link to login. So if the account service is logged in, is false, not is logged in, let's bring them to the login page. Uh, if they are logged in, what I like to do, actually, let me get rid of that one for now because we don't have the profile loaded yet. We'll remedy that very soon. Um, if they are logged in, here I'm going to give them a link to the order history. And uh, then finally, let's give them a link to uh, log out over here. So if they're logged in, let's provide a link to the logout action. So nothing overly sophisticated. Let me go back to my application. Actually, let's throw in a little bit of CSS as well. There's no CSS. And boom, here's a little bit of CSS just to make it look good. All right, so what does this look like? Here's my account button. Let's give it a try right now. Uh, click on login, brings me to login component, but the login component has not been written. Um, we're putting the pieces in place. I can see I've got my account, um, my account button, where my account menu really, it does have a login uh, menu entry and it just brings me to login component. We set up the routes for that previously. Let's now write the code for the, um, uh, for the login component where the action will actually take place, where we'll invoke the login on the uh, authentication service. So let's uh, crack open our login component, jump into the code. A couple of things that I will need. The first thing I'll need is uh, an injection of the authentication service, call it whatever you want. That's my auth service that I've created with you guys. And right off the bat, also inject the 
uh, router, since I'll need that later on. My whoops, router. And there we are. So when it comes to the constructor, that's all I really need. Let's add a login method. And actually, let's copy this one. It'll go a little bit faster. It's not a complex method. But let's drop it in here. So there we go. Here's my method. I'm going to capture a user ID and a password. We'll capture that from the form. We are going to issue a login request. Login request, as a reminder, is that class that I've created in the auth service previously. Let's go back to the uh, login. Yes, over here. So let's um, uh, let's use the um, uh, let's create a login request instance. All right, very simple uh, um, object notation over here. And then let's use the authentication service called the login methods that I've uh, created earlier. Subscribe to the promise over here. And assuming that everything goes well, we're going to navigate back to the home. If there's an error, let's display the error message itself. All right, uh, now it's complaining about the route. Shouldn't be a problem. Those should be any type of object. Let's go back over here. Uh, still complaining. What are you not happy about? Uh, oh, no, that's not it. Uh, I'm probably missing an import or my, no, it should be the right import. Uh, actually, it's not route, it's router. Boom, there we are. And, uh, Just wondering what is complaining about. Uh, let's give her a route since that's not the one I meant to use anyway. Route. I do apologize. My mouse is a little bit funky. Over here, it seems to uh, not be sure if I want to click, so double click or not click at all sometimes. Uh, and what are you complaining about? Uh, okay, export class. That should be good. And. Uh, Error message should be good. Well, I'm just taking a quick boo over here. So I just want to see what is complaining. It might just be stale errors. Okay, it was a stale error. All right, so moving ahead, here it is. Now I do have, um, uh, well, the login. Login works, uh, uh, compiles, but of course the page is not defined. So let's crack open the login component. Let's drop in some HTML, nothing overly fancy. Uh, so here is my login form. I've got my, um, my um, user ID input over here. I've got my password input. I've got my button uh, to invoke the login action. Again, standard Angular stuff. If you have any questions, don't be shy. Let's give that a quick go. I'll head back to my browser. Here's my login form. So that looks good and now I can start to, or I can attempt a login. Let me try an invalid login. For example, I'll type in Bob, whatever password. And actually let's make that, let's crack open the dev tools so that we can see the network activity. Network activity, thank you. And I'm gonna to try to sign in over here. And uh, what I'd like to show you is I've got an error, not what I meant to show you. Uh, to -do -do. Forbidden. Okay, well, there we go. That's exactly what I should get a 403 back from the server login fail. I was hoping to actually show you the request itself, but I think it got squished um, due to the size of the screen. Let's make that a little bit smaller. There we go. So here's the actual request login. Um, and if we take a look at the response, make that a little bit bigger if I can. Just close that for now. Uh, in the response, uh, there it goes, status code 403, forbidden, All right? So the server sent me back a 403 exactly as I should, as I would expect. Let's try another login. And actually, before I send that second login, I do want to show you the, um, in the request that I sent out, 
here's the request payload, so the JSON payload, the user ID, the top secret password over here. Uh, we can see exactly what I sent to the server. Let's try that a second time. Sign in over here. Uh, you'll notice over here that this time it did bring me back to the home page. Uh, there's the, let's go to the second HTTP request. Assuming that I haven't lost it over here. Uh, where did you go? Sorry, my screen is so tiny over here. Uh, not sure where the second request went, uh, but in the second request over here, I should have gotten a 200 OK with a payload, um, a JSON token payload. Let me try that a second time. Let's go to, there's my account button, by the way, get uh, wrapped to the other side. Uh, let me log out, that should work. Log in. Let's try that a second time, because I would like to show you the token. There we are. And this time, go away. Thank you. And this time, if we take a look at the uh, request over here, um, or in the response itself, the request hasn't really changed. There's my JSON payload. In the response, notice what we get back from the server. That's a uh, JWT response. Here's a token. Here's, uh, and here's the encrypted user profile. It's not strongly encrypted, but it does validate that we have been, uh, uh, that we have successfully authenticated. We'll decrypt that user profile later on, but I do want to show you right now that I am able to send that HTTP request to the server, get either a 403, sorry, we don't recognize username and password, or a 200, we recognize that username and password. So let's move ahead. Now that we've got a login capability and then a logout, I did demonstrate the logout. Let's talk about the order. All right. Uh, let's get into the order history. Right now, there's nothing in the, or, uh, the order history. What I'd like to do is provide a mechanism by which I can, um, I can verify that the, uh, uh, that uh, the user is properly authenticated before I pull up the order history. Now, before I do that, the next thing I'm going to do over here is I'll actually we'll look at decoding our JWT token. Uh, and to do that, let me add two other components to my project. So I'll do an NPM install JWT decode. The name pretty much says it all. I'm using JWT encode in my server side project to create the token. Now, what I want to do over here is I want to be able to decode it. So let me add this to my dependencies. Shouldn't take too, too long. And uh, because I'm working in, uh, in Angular, let's also add npm install the types for that as well. JWT decode. And let's save, save dev this one. This just so I have my uh, integration with TypeScript. Should not take too, too long while this is happening. Uh, let's go back to the auth service. A couple of changes I want to do to my auth service. Uh, the first one is when we receive a response. Right now, all I'm doing over here is I'm grabbing the JWT token and uh, storing it in the class itself. Uh, let's add a user profile to that component profile profile now the user profile class does not exist so i'll create it right now and i want to make sure it's in the same file so i'll just drop it in here user profile uh, we'll keep it very simple uh, the user profile class will be a mirror of uh, doo -doo -doo, where are you a mirror of there you go. The user account structure that I have over here, which only contain right now an email and a name. I could add what, whatever else I want. Remember that this comes from the server. The server is going to send that to me as a JWT token, which I'll need to decode to extract the information. Uh, and again, we'll uh, indicate that a user profile will have an email. This will just be a string and we'll have a name, which will also be a string. And of course, whatever else I may need in here. Let's keep it Simple. Moving down, let's change our pipe over here. Right now I'm just tapping um, into the pipe. Um, let's change that as follows. I'm going to, I'll just grab the code 
over here instead of typing it in. It's not complicated code, but uh, uh, where are you? To do, do, do there we go. But uh, let's go to the following code. So in, I have actually, let me re-add the tap. So still tapping into the pipe over here. This time, um, I'm going to uh, provide a follow-up method over here. Um, takes one parameter response, the response that we received over here. Uh, and in this one, uh, changing things around a little bit, still grabbing the JWT token, but now I'm adding a line to decode the user profile. Decode over here, which is a method. Oops, nope, sorry, wrong import over here. Uh, that should be an import actually as decode uh, from JWT, JWT decode. All right, uh, and the reason why I'm doing an import star as is that JWT decode is just a function. Uh, it's not a class. So I'm gonna re, uh, rename the import to decode over here. And uh, there it goes. So this will uh, this will grab my JWT token and decode the content so I can have access to the user profile. To demonstrate that a user profile is available for us, let's present it now <coughs> in, pardon me, um, in the toolbar HTML. Uh, let's add uh, say right above the uh, login over here. I'm just gonna add a new div, div, and uh, set an if, if auth service is logged in. So if the user is logged in, then let's happily display their username. Um, let's just put in welcome auth service dot user profile dot name. There we are. All right, so let's display that in our login. So now let's go back to our home, the account. I'm not logged in right now. The application got reloaded. Let's successfully log in, top secret password, sign in. There you go. Now, if I take a look at my login, welcome Yosemite Slam. So uh, not only was I able to log in, uh, but using JWT, I was able to receive an authentication token from the server. That token was not just a random value, uh, as we have, for example, with Session Cookie. This was actually an encrypted value, um, loosely encrypted. So this is not really meant for security. You want to do that over HTTPS. Uh, but uh, I was able to decrypt that token to access the um, the username or the user profile really for that individual. So there we go. I can uh, try that again. I can log out. Let's log back in. Try another user. Sign in. And if I take a look over here, welcome Daffy Duck. So we can see that uh, I was able to pull up a different profile. So let's move ahead. Now that we were able to authenticate a user, grab their user profile, whatever profile is sent back from the server. And that's one of the reasons why I like to choose JWT. Um, whatever it works out is that it's such a simple protocol. It works well. Uh, it is reasonably secure, but like any authentication, it should really be done over HTTPS. Uh, and there's not a lot of overhead uh, on both the server and the client as we can see over here. But now the last part I'd like to do with you uh, formally is I'd like to um, ensure that when we look at the orders, first of all, we've got something to show, but what we show over here only shows up if the user is properly authenticated. In other words, let me go back and make a couple of changes to my code. Right now, there's no uh, code behind my order, so we'll change that right now. Uh, I'll create actually a new component or service actually, let's call it account. So generate service account. There it is, should be there at least. Account service, oh, no. uh, account service, there we are. Um, and in the account service, let's create actually a class to store the information about an order. I'll actually fetch that information from the server. And here, let's put in a 
date, so the date of the order, we'll just store it as a string. Uh, let's have a total for the order number. And of course, a status. Is it shipped? Is it uh, uh, processed, canceled, that sort of thing? Let's drop that in here as well. So very simple uh, class over here. Um, and again, this will come from the server. I can show you the code for that, but again, it's trivial code. Um, let's write the necessarily lo the, the necessary logic to fetch that in the constructor for the account service. Let's inject, first of all, the uh, Ajax HTTP wrapper. HTTP client, and following that, following that, uh, let's also inject my authentication service. There we are. Okay, and uh, oh yes. All right, so that should be good. Nothing else I really need to do with the uh, constructor. Um, let's provide a function over here, get order history. And actually for this one, I'll just copy and paste. It'll be as fast, or, well, it's not faster. It's not a complex method again, but I do want to highlight a couple of things in the design of that method. Here's my get order history. So as always, it's a promise, an observable. Um, in here, I am, and this is important over here, because I want to fetch the order history, I am going to include um, a new header, new HTTP header over here, which will be my JWT token. Um, so actually, I should be service. There we go. Um, SVC. So um, let me include my token over here as my authorization token. So this will ensure that when the server receives that request, it can validate that this request comes from an authenticated user. So very important over here. Uh, and following that, HTTP get fetch a list of order over here from the following API with the, or, uh, with the header that we've prepared ahead of time. So that code should be reasonably trivial over here. Um, so let's fetch a series of order and we'll display them to the um, uh, to our users um, at this point. Let's go ahead and do that right now. I'll finally complete my history component. So there we go. Right now, there's really nothing happening with that uh, component. Let's add uh, in the class. We'll add a uh, order history, which will be an order object. And I want to make sure we are importing the right one. Uh, which one did we import? Nope. Oh, yeah. Order, and actually, I should be. Uh, there we go. Uh, that should be an array. So give me an array of order over here. Moving down, let's add um, actually in our on in it. I'm going to do that outside the constructor, make sure that Angular is fully initialized. Uh, actually, let's inject account service. So that's the service I created just a moment ago. Account service. And let's fetch account. Why are you not giving it to me? Service dot uh, to do get order order history subscribe and in here history that will be my return value this dot order history equals the value I'm given over here. Let's close that. And uh, do I have a dangling something that's open somewhere? My apologies. I have something obviously dangling. Oh my goodness. There we are. And. Uh, Clean that up a little bit. All right. 
So there we are, that should be good. So in the initialization, I'm actually going to go to the server, uh, call get order history of this. So well, let's actually well go to the server over here, pass the JWT token, receive a uh, history over here. Um, and the way the server is written, just so you know, is that if we have a valid token, we are gonna get the history back. If we do not have a valid token, we'll get a blank history. Uh, and to demonstrate, this one um, there's one more change or at least two more change I like to do over here let's actually give that page some code so let me crack open some existing code just to make it a little bit faster for us so very simple um, a very simple view over here is just going to be a uh, an HTML table show me the total, uh, the date, the total, the status that's it that's all we're going to show in our order history Moving down, um, let's give that a go as is. So the first thing I'm gonna demonstrate, well, let me log in, let me log in as Sam, sign in, go to the account, orders, here's Sam's order history. That worked well, all right? You can see over here, I'm in the order history URL, the order history path, I should say. So that worked correctly. Let's go back to our home. Let me do uh, something that is not good. I'll go to my logout over here. There it goes, so I've logged out. I'm no longer logged into the application. I've wiped out my JWT token. Let me go back to the order history and notice two things. First of all, it does bring me to the component, does show me the list of order. Of course, the server at this point refused to send a order history since the JWT token is no longer existent, uh, no longer valid. Um, and also, uh, well, do I have a blank? list of orders. So from a security perspective, it worked. From maybe a user experience perspective, it's not very good. What if the user bookmarks that page? All right, they add a bookmark to that page and they go back to that page later on. Uh, what they're going to see over here is a blank order history. And the reason is, hey, they, they're brought back to that page. The JWT token has long uh, expired. It's long gone from the browser. Uh, they're gonna see a blank uh, page. That's awesome to think, oh my God, I've lost all my orders. Not good. So what I'd like to do over here is um, protect the route. This will serve two purposes. The first one is I wanna make sure that from an Angular perspective, we only go, to, we can only go to that page if we are authenticated. And if we're not authenticated, let's get the user to log in. Second thing is, uh, if a user does land on that page for whatever reason, bookmarking again being the prime example, and they are not authenticated, instead of showing them a blank or a couple of errors, let's bring them to login form. So let's get into the authorization side of things. So let's revisit our authentication service. We'll do a lot of the activities from the authentication service. Authentication, there we go. In the authentication service, let's add a new interface over here, uh, an Angular interface over here, implements, implements can activate. So that's an Angular interface over here, which we can use to determine, can we activate a component or not? Let's implement the can activate down here. Uh, right now we've got a return on define. You'll notice that we do get some parameter. We get a route, we get a state uh, over here. <coughs> um, for now, and actually, you know what, I'm going to simplify that even further. I don't need all those parameter and actually yeah, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of stuff was added over here. I don't necessarily need all I want to do over here is uh, return a Boolean. Uh, I will need the router. Actually, I could have received as a parameter, but because I've erased it, I'll just inject it in the constructor. So I will request the uh, Angular router over here. So that's something I've done with another one of my examples. I'll just move right back down here. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll simply take a look at, first of all, if this dot is logged in. So if the user is not logged in, um, um, so if the user is not logged, this, lo not logged in, then let's reroute them to the login route, login 
route. So if the user is not logged in, let's log uh, route them to the reroute them to login route over here. Uh, this needs to be a array. Else, and we're going to actually go to a return false, return false. This, uh, we're going to return a Boolean uh, indicating, yes, you can activate a component. No, do not activate it. So don't activate it. They're not logged in. We're not going to allow you to do that. Uh, if they are logged in, return true. They're logged in, cool. They're allowed to activate that component. Now, notice over here, I am not specifying which component um, we can activate. And this is a standard um, interface in Angular that I'm using over here. The can activate interface is what we're using over here. Uh, I'm not calling it directly, nor, uh, nor am I specifying which component over here. So to integrate the can activate with my application, the next thing and the last thing really I'll need to do over here is I'll need to add this to my routing. So let's go to the routing, uh, the routes over here. Here's my order history route. Let's add one more element over here um, into the list of parameters. Can activate and I'll pass my auth service instance or not auth service class over here. In other words, what I'm telling Angular over here is before we, uh, before the user can invoke the order history route, the moment they really invoke that route, let's first query that service. Let's call can activate on that service. Uh, and if it returns true, hey, we're going to allow them to activate it. If it returns false, access tonight. And in this case, as a bonus, as I've shown you previously, um, if, they, um, if they're not logged in, we'll bring them to the login page as well. Let's give that a go. Let's uh, make sure that it works for us. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll try to navigate directly to the order history. Notice it brought me to the login page to show you that this is indeed what happened because the page was already up. Uh, let me go back to the home page. I can see there's my login link. Let's go to order history. Please log in. So the user now doesn't get a confusing screen wondering, hey, what happened to all my order? Uh, let's give that a quick go. Here's Sam. Here's um, uh, my top secret password. Sign in. All right. So now there's I'm, I'm logged in. I can take a look at my order history. Ah, there we go. Now I'm able to retrieve the order from the server. I do have an authentication token. Uh, and of course, if I go back to my home, I didn't create a link back to the home. Log out go back to the order history, oops, prompted me to log back in. So what I've done over here is I've implemented one form of authentication at the route level over here, um, where now I can decide programmatically if my users can or cannot access certain route. This is all done on the client side. And I do want to emphasize over here, especially for those of you who are accustomed to server side security, uh, server side security versus client side security needs to be handled fairly differently. Yes, the concepts are kind of the same, but logic does need to change. Uh, it is a completely different domain we are dealing with. So this said, hey, I realize it's almost the end of our lunchtime at this point. Um, I'm pretty much going to wrap up my demonstration with that. So I've shown you over here three, uh, what I believe to be three important characteristics of working with Angular and, and securing your application. The first one, of course, is XSS, protecting your guests, yourselves against XSS by, um, um, well, out of the box. There's nothing really you need to do, but if you do need to bypass it, and please only do that with very um, uh, with um, with a lot of care and consideration, it is a potential security concern that we are introducing in our application. If there's any way by which a rogue user could inject some HTML on your page, guess what? You're now vulnerable to access as cross-site scripting attack. Um, so again, please use that with care and consideration and only use that if there are no other mechanism, for example, simply passing a class or using a, a class name or even some, uh, um, some styles to change the look of your page and even passing styles is a little bit dangerous uh, for your page. The second thing that I've shown you over here is an example of authenticating with, um, with Angular. I've used, it, I've used JWT, JSON Web, Tol uh, Web uh, Token, 
to authenticate the user. It's simple, it's light, it works well. Uh, very uh, very easy to integrate, it's very much JavaScript-ish. I could have used OAuth too, I could have used SAML, I could have used other approach, but it might have taken a little bit more setup to achieve that. But it wasn't complicated to do. Uh, and the last thing that I've shown you over here is authorization. I created a page that can only be accessed, or route I should say, that can only be accessed if the, um, uh, if the user is indeed logged in. So to wrap things up, I recognize that it's already five minutes past the end of lunch. So I thank you very much for joining me today um, in that presentation. Um, one, a couple of last things I do want to leave you with when it comes to that presentation over here. Skipped over my introduction. Um, the code for those of you who are interested, here's a link to the code, pretty much the exact same code that I've shown you over here. I'll actually put that in the chat window if you want a direct link to that. And that slide will also be available to you, Cameron. Ah, sorry, my mouse is really being problematic over here. And uh, anyway, I'll put that in the chat window as quickly as I can. Um, and uh, the other thing as well, And uh, the other thing as well, I did leave you with my email address. I'll also put that in the chat window. Should any of you have any subsequent questions about anything we've looked at um, or um, even haven't looked at when it comes to Angular, drop an email. I'll do my best to answer any questions that you might have. So with that said, I do thank you very much again for your time. And I do apologize. I am partially uh, eating into your lunch at this point. So I do appreciate your patience with me. Uh, if you have any questions, you're welcome to stick around. Uh, drop a message in the chat window. Otherwise, uh, use my email address. Drop me a message, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And otherwise, one way or another, Hope you enjoyed the rest of your lunch. Hope you enjoyed the rest of your afternoon. Weekend is coming up very soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Here's the link in the chat window. Let's make sure that's for everybody. Come on. Thank you. And here's the my email address. There we are. So that said, I'm reserving the rest of time for any questions, comments, discussions you might have. I'm available for you. Uh, and again, otherwise, as I said, hope you guys have a great afternoon. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, and there you go. I see the there was a question, will we have a link to this video online? Absolutely. Uh, in the next couple of days, we are going to be putting that online. Uh, let me bring that up for you guys. And so if you miss anything or if you wanted to rewatch the video, webagesolutions.com uh, slash webinars. Boom. Just as an FYI, uh, you've landed on that page before. I'm sure this is where we offer all of our free webinars. Take advantage of them. Uh, there's our past webinars link. Uh, this webinars will show up somewhere in here um, under our web uh, development, actually should be in here somewhere, but it will show up in here. Uh, if you want to get a link to the webinar, you can always uh, send me an email and I'll make sure to uh, reply back with a link to the to the actual webinar once it's posted. So here's the link to our webinars. Uh, and you may want to keep an eye out on this one. We do have uh, typically one lunch hour webinar per week, and we usually have also a half day webinar per month going into more depth into some topic and a wide variety of topic. I mean, you can see that uh, uh, we do have a wide variety of topic over here, some exciting st uh, stuff like unit testing, Angular JS, uh, embracing DevOps, uh, love DevOps over here, real world agile, what's new in Java 8. Ooh, that was a bit dated, but um, uh, keep an eye out on our webinars over here. We have usually one per week for you guys to enjoy by different presenter. I'm just one of the many presenters uh, that you'll enjoy in here. All right, so this said, I'm not seeing any questions coming up. I'll give you guys another minute or two.
if you have any questions for me, again, I'll be happy to answer them. Otherwise, I'm going to wrap up the session very soon. All right. That said, at a minimum, you do have my email address. If there's, a, if you do think of additional questions uh, after the seminar is over, you know how it is, right? Um, you go and do your monthly or your weekly uh, grocery. Uh, you think you've got everything. Then when you come back home, you immediately realize, oh darn it, we forgot uh, one of the most important thing we uh, set out to uh, to get. So if that happens with uh, with this presentation, don't be shy to drop me an email. Um, how to present bold tags from JSON response, not address if I'm uh, wrong. Actually, uh, it was address, was uh, my first demo. Let me bring this back for you. Uh, actually, I'll go start with the uh, web browser over here in the online shop. I'll switch back actually to the uh, smaller card. Um, here it is, you can see it on escape. Here it is escape. Um, how did I do that? If you've missed it during the uh, seminar, you might have joined in a little bit late. That was the first thing I really presented. Let's go back to the shop, pardon me. Um, in terms of server side, nothing was changed, but there's two changes I had to do on the client side that was under my, um, my cards. Where are you? Brought a card. There we go. So the first one is I needed to use the sanitizer bypass security trusted HTML return a safe HTML object to Angular uh, to tell Angular over here that text that I have over here the product description is safe display it as is do not escape it uh, so that's the first thing that I've done I've encapsulated that in a property that I've created specifically for that need get description on my component that's my product card component so we're using the safe html returning a safe html instead of a string the second part is you will also need to use the inner html attribute to present that property not just an attribute expression or value expression as we're using over here that's why i kept both in the presentation over here to highlight the difference between the way we normally and generally want to do it in angular um, by using uh, placeholders, uh, but if you want to display HTML, and again, do that with care and consideration, there's a little bit more jumping through. For good reason, we want to make it blatantly obvious that you are doing something dangerous over here. So this is something that you want to do only with care and consideration. So thank you very, <coughs> thank you very much for asking. Uh, if you have any further questions, hey, don't be shy. And again, a copy of that code, if ever you do want to refer to it on, uh, at your leisure, is available for you on GitHub as well. So that said, again, thank you very much for your participation. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to wrap things up with that right now. Um, and again, hope you enjoy the rest of your day and hope we'll see you guys again soon in another uh, webinar.